And good morning, good afternoon. This is uh, Bart Mearshart. Welcome to this ESCO software solution demonstration series. And in today's episode, we are going to be covering ESCO truck fill. All participants have been muted. At the end of this demonstration, I will unmute for a Q&A and stay tuned for additional sessions coming up every Tuesday and Thursday. So, ESCO Truck Fill, let's take a deeper dive today. Uh, first, give you an introduction on the basic features and then look a little deeper into the options allowing me to fine tune the loading of my trucks. Now, as you can see here in the top left, the truck fill program allows you to create, edit, view, print, email, and store and distribute loading plans for different products, not only in trucks, but also containers and rail cars. Loading uh, containers for airplanes is only possible for the larger airplanes where the container loads in the center of the um, fuselage. The containers on the left and right side are tapered, and that is something that um, truck fill does not support. But anything like sea freight or uh, you know uh, containers that get put on a ship or containers that um, get uh, put on uh, railway carts or rail cars uh, that is all uh, covered in truck fill. So the main interface right here allows you to change the resolution depending on your screen. So let's go ahead and go for 1280 by 1024 today. You can see the uh, screen is uh, divided in two sections right here, the top section that can help you to plan, create, and maintain and distribute those trucks. And then the bottom section essentially allows you to open uh, using the standard solution dialog or uh, the standard uh, input dialog. Now, obviously you can do that as well from here by using the file open. Uh, now that we're up here in the menus, uh, notice that the program supports uh, not only English, but also French and Spanish and German as interface. Um, you can create a, a shortcut on your desktop for quick access. And let's not forget about the help menu, which I've already opened here. So for a quick first uh, example, I'm going to start the program and the program is going to present me an interface with two different tabs going across the top right here. One of them is products and the other tab contains all the information pertaining to the truck style. So in that you can pick right here from this drop down list. The first tab contains products, as I mentioned. Uh, you can see that we already have four different types of products loaded in the interface. Uh, each of these products has a label, a product type, linked with height and weight, of course, four important parameters. And if I use my mouse here to scroll over to the right, you can see another very important parameter right here is the quantity for each of these products. Now also uh, keep an eye on these other input parameters like sequence, orientation, priority, and stacking uh, restrictions. We'll be experimenting with all those parameters to show you how they impact the loading pattern. So with these standards, uh, we're going to uh, use these for now. Later, I'll show you how you can add your own uh, products and or palettes. Now, keep in mind these palettes, you will have to prepare first using the Cape Pack software, uh, and then you will be able to import those and put those uh, in a, a truck. So we're going to leave the standard values in here for what they are. Um, before we start calculating, 
let's have a quick look at the truck tab where you can see that you can pick from a variety of different styles of containers. So here I have a, a dry uh, 40 foot. Um, here I have a flatbed, an open top, a reefer, um, C cell right there, standard truck. So let's scroll down a little bit. We have uh, reefers right there, high cubes. Uh, you can see some brands right here that should look familiar um, to you uh, in the US. Um, here we have specific um, shipping containers for uh, brand owners. And then all the way at the, ex at the end, you'll see some examples. And um, you can also obviously limit this list right here by only uh, exposing uh, the ones that you uh, truly use on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, you would be able to come in here and limit uh, the number of trucks that you see in here. You can also create new trucks uh, right here by clicking on the make new truck. So if I would uh, want to create my own, uh, let's say BART, truck number one, you would enter the length, the width, and the height of your container inside dimension. And then you would also enter the maximum space allowed within that truck. So it doesn't mean per se that uh, you want to be able to use the entire uh, volume of that truck. There might be elements in there like uh, dividers or refrigeration units um, that need to uh, stay clear. So your maximum space might be uh, smaller and typically it would be than the inside dimensions. And then we also specify the thickness of the container, which again will reduce that uh, space. So if I look at the one uh, that I currently have selected, which is the 40 foot uh, truck, I can click on the edit. You can see here the dimension specified in inches. Uh, you can also change that to metric if you want. Um, we can specify also the weight and the maximum weight of the truck. Um, furthermore, you have the axle and section info. This allows you to indicate where the axles fall for that truck. Uh, so this seems to be a little off, I have to say. Um, let's have a look, let's have a closer look. So my length is 473. So based on my um, parameters, uh, typically I would assume my rear axle would be a little further back right there. So let's go ahead and fix that. That's uh, a mistake that I made. And those are parameters, obviously, that you would enter uh, based on the actual characteristics of the truck. And if you don't know that, you can um, contact the truck manufacturer uh, or look up that information on the internet. Okay, so let's go ahead and update this one and save this. Uh, before I do that, also notice there's an acceptable center of gravity cylinder that uh, you can uh, define, which uh, typically is uh, the height uh, of the truck uh, divided by two, and then the width typically is the length of the truck. So I'm going to put that up by 470. Uh, let's see, the center must be less than the maximum load uh, width of the container. Gotcha. So um, the width uh, being uh, 92, so let's make that 45. Okay, so I'm going to overwrite my existing truck and use that information. Um, and we going to also have a quick look here at the calculation settings before we hit that uh, calculate button. Notice that the software allows you to use four different types of algorithms. So the load wizard, which will fill the truck and calculate the most optimal fill. You can either set to a sequential load wizard. This will load the products in the order of the sequence codes that I assigned to my products. So if you want your products to go in the truck 
in a specific order, first in, last out, first in, first out, depending on uh, a route that needs to be followed with uh, several stops. Uh, think of a, a FedEx uh, or a UPS. Then you would use something like this in combination with uh, loading sequences. And I'll show you where you can assign those sequences to the products. The default mode, which is selected here by default, is Truck Fill Load Wizard. This will create um, the best optimal load uh, for a mixed fashion. So I would recommend starting with that. The Truck Container Editor Wizard allows you to manually fill your truck using drag and drop. Pretty time consuming, but if you have a very specific way in which you want to load, let's say you have very large industrial components that you want to load um, and you want to respect uh, the center of gravity and load uh, other products around that, uh, very fragile products, you would use this. And then the single product fill wizard will uh, be very efficient in loading one single object, one single product. Okay. So for now, let's just start with the truck fill load wizard and let's uh, experiment with these options here in just a little bit, but I'm not going to hold this up a little anymore. So I am just going to calculate right now the most optimal fill. And you can see that after clicking on that calculate button, the software didn't take long to calculate this solution. So what am I looking at? I'm looking at my solution screen. Notice you can always go back here using the back button to go back to the input data. And here I get a numerical overview of my truck results. So I can see that I have, or I'm going to need three different trucks for this uh, load, for this mixed load. My load cube efficiency is 81%. Um, and you can use the setup buttons where you can see again right here the container type. So that's my truck. And you can peruse through that like so by hitting the up or down button. And you can see the first, the second, and the third truck right there. Okay, um, so I can see the way it's filled. A couple of observations. My second uh, truck has uh, primarily the, uh, right here, this uh, load uh, on this pallet. And my last truck um, is not very efficient. And again, that's because the quantity for this pallet was uh, what it is, right? So. With that in mind, um, I'm going to show you first a couple of more things uh, you can do here. So uh, using the control panel right here, you can show the color of the different products. So notice that color was assigned in the first screen that we looked at. Um, you can just show an outline if you don't want to get the colors uh, to be in your way. Um, you can show the control face. So the control phase is also assigned in the first screen. So if you go back uh, right here, my um, standard uh, box right here, uh, I can double click on that and I can define a control phase and I can say my control phase is the top, right? So I want to focus on the top of that. Um, if you go back to the calculation and back to those setup buttons right here, you will then see that control phase being highlighted um, as such. You can also show a, a label on that. So that's going to number the product as they were uh, brought into the software. And that might be helpful, you know, if you look at the uh, schematics and uh, the person filling this truck needs to know how that product goes in the truck, upside down or what have you. Um, format object uh, allows you to show uh, content if there's content in it, wraps, show layer, and then we can also highlight again our axle indicators of our truck. Okay, now that we have this uh, out of the way, let's go back and let's start playing around a little bit with these input parameters. So you noticed uh, in the solution that the uh, fridge, which was the third product right here, um, was stacked upside down. 
and uh, on its side. Now, the reason why I allow that is because right here in the input screen, I decided that this uh, might be oriented in the length, width, or height. But for a fragile electronic uh, device, well, fridges do, do, contain, do uh, contain more and more electronics nowadays, don't they? Um, I might say, hey, this is a fragile product. The Freon might leak out of the uh, unit, so we don't want that. Uh, you know, this needs to be stored face up only height. So I'm putting a restriction on my loading for this specific product. Okay. So again, here you can see the length, width, height, and weight of that product and the required quantity. So just making that one single change, selecting OK and selecting my calculator again, we are going to see a pretty big difference. Uh, and you can see that difference already here. So all the fridges right here are stored only pointing upwards. Okay, that's observation number one. Um, and furthermore, nothing really has changed. Okay, so let's go back and play with some other parameters. First thing I can think of is maybe a parameter that would prevent this fridge from being stacked on top of this pallet. Because the pallet might contain fragile boxes and the crush strength would simply not be able to hold the weight of that fridge. So how can I force the program not to stack the fridge on the pallet underneath it? Well, let's go back to the product. Uh, let's click on the fridge, double click to edit. And let's look at the loading rules. So these loading rules are very important and give you a lot of control over how products get stacked. First off, we have what we call a sequence code. So sequence is a number from one to nine, 99 or higher, I believe uh, it goes up to a thousand or more. And the lower the number, like number one, the higher the priority, right? So think of one as the highest priority, two, the second highest priority, and so on and so on. So because I only have four products, I am actually going to give this a priority code of three. Uh, in order not to confuse myself, I'm going to relate this to the actual product, but I could use um, a number um, one and then change the priority for the others. But more importantly, um, what I also want to do here is give it a stack restriction. Okay, so um, I'm going to say I do not allow stacking and um, again, I can set the priority code here to be uh, a certain number. So sequence is the sequence in which the object will be loaded. So think of groups. And then within these groups, I can determine a priority uh, within uh, that group. So if I give this a lower priority, the object is going to be stacked more towards the end of the truck. Okay, so sequence three, meaning lower than the other uh, three products, priority code within that sequence. Uh, I can have multiple products, but I'm going to uh, give this a lower uh, priority within that group, and then I don't allow it to be stacked. So just making those uh, changes, uh, selecting OK and hitting the Calculate button, we can see here that uh, we now have our truck right there. Uh, truck number one, truck number two, and three. Uh, hang on here. I can see that uh, it did still stack it on the uh, pallet. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to tell this pallet right here in my uh, stack restrictions, in my loading rules, that um, this cannot be uh, stacked, not stackable right here. So selecting that and uh, going back to my calculate button, we will now see that uh, truck number one 
uh, here on the end of the second truck, we have some space to store these fridges. Again, only one layer high. And then my third will then contain the remaining fridges. Okay, so by changing these priority codes and stack restrictions, I have a lot of influence on how I can uh, stack these products. So uh, let's make some more changes. So my fridges are stacked in a specific way and I can see here that this whole group of products was um, stacked in the front of the uh, second uh, truck, actually the first uh, truck. So what if on my delivery route, we would need to unload these pallets first. So in order to achieve that, I could come back and I could say that my stack uh, order right there, my sequence for this one, this one, and that one should be different than this uh, pallet load. So going into my uh, first product, I can say that I want, for example, this to be uh, sequence two with um, a uh, specific priority code. We'll leave that. Um, my uh, next product will also change this to a second sequence. The third one um, as well. So that's my fridge. So that's already set to um, its own priority. And then I have my pallet, which uh, in my case uh, has um, the first sequence code. So by making that change and hitting that calculate button, you can see, uh, depending on, on how we made those priority codes, how that impacts my load. So in my case, because my pallet had a higher uh, sequence code. So if I make that lower um, right there, this would now lower than the other. That is, that will now uh, place my uh, other products first in the truck. So this will be the, the front of the cabin and then start loading the uh, other products like so. Okay. So uh, in this case, you notice that by doing that, um, I actually need uh, another truck, right? Because they also made those not stackable. So the system no longer stacks objects on there. Um, before you start the calculation process, there's a nice tool in here that's called the load estimation. So this is a great tool to get a very quick idea of the total volume of all these products that we're trying to put in those containers. So here you can see that the system shows me that the standard box represents only 2% of the total load. The total load being 167%. The largest portion of this uh, obviously is my uh, pallet right there that I imported, which represents 143%. Uh, because I wanted 50 of those to be loaded. So here again, we can see the loading sequence, the code and the priority that I typed in and the stack restrictions. So those are the parameters that we um, keyed in earlier. So this might get, give you a, a very good idea of, um, you know, what uh, to expect before you hit that calculate button. Okay, uh, let's look at some more uh, things. So how do I get uh, additional um, information in here? Well, you can simply click on the add product and that will give you the opportunity to add uh, other products in here. Uh, you can pick a certain color. So let's say we have a 20 inch by 20 inch by 20 inch shipper, which weighs two pounds and I'm gonna need 20 of those boxes and they can only be stacked in the height. Um, we can set a specific color for those. Let's pick color we don't have yet. I believe we already have green. Let's stick with this dark purple here. So if I do that and adding that, I can now hit my calculate button and we can see here my product uh, being added, my 20 boxes being added to my truck right now. So that's how easy it is. Um, importing pallets, 
um, you can do um, right here by using the add palette load and then you would use the import palette load but before you can do that you have to import this palette from cape pack so remember cape pack is our other standalone product that you can see here this allows you to create um, right here display palettes single palettes or order fulfillment um, i've already uh, done that uh, ahead of time and so once you've done that you can go ahead and create uh, safe this palette and switch back over to truck fill where you can then use the import palette loads right here uh, or order fulfillment into our database so import order fulfillment right there so this is one that I created yesterday, right there, February 17, SKU 123P. Uh, so I can click on that, I can say open, and we can see here that these were three different palettes with a specific order containing five products in total. So um, I can uh, import that information and uh, it's already in my database uh, obviously so that's fine and then after you do that you can then uh, come in here and you can import that palette load that will then show up right here in your interface so you can see these three different loads so if i would uh, say yes i want that one i only want one of those um, and uh, add it like so and calculate it we will now see our additional pallet uh, being loaded in one of these four trucks. And that was probably all the way in the front because the priority code was set to be very low. And indeed, it's actually underneath there. That brings me to another good point is the uh, viewing. So a couple of different ways um, you can do uh, a built up view. So using the show built up view. Um, there is um, a 25, 50, 75, and 100% uh, view. So uh, to get rid of that, you click back on the built up view and say restore. Um, what you can also do here is a diagram um, of the uh, truck. Um, right here, these are this is my actual truck, so you can go between the different trucks. Um, load details you can see here you can get the uh, order summary of uh, the results we can go get a quick report here that's how you switch uh, between those and then in the view here um, you can uh, also do an all side view all right so if you do the old side view uh, again there's no way for these uh, uh, containers to hide so I can see right here in the side view this will be the front of the truck. We can see uh, those different trucks. And again, that's something that uh, you restore by going to all side view and restore that view. So uh, generating a final report, we can do by uh, creating a uh, PDF file, for example. We also have other ways to distribute this information by email or um, create an HTML web page and publish it on there. Um, and this will contain all my standard information, uh, the type of container, the number of products, the load. Uh, so all this uh, information right here uh, on this seven page, uh, right here, this seven page report. And so this report you could send to uh, the warehouse the, or the fulfillment uh, company or, uh, you know, the people that load that truck. So that would uh, that would give you uh, opportunity to look at that information